Russian forces heavily rely on repaired tanks and armoured vehicles pulled from storage to replace their losses in equipment. However, likely, Russia will not be able to sustain these losses in the long term, reports the US Institute for the Study of War, ISW. The report cites Ukrainian Center for Defense Strategies expert Viktor Kevlyuk, who noted that Russian forces continue to produce and repair about 150 to 160 new tanks per month, approximately 1,920 tanks annually. This roughly matches the current rate of replacing Russian tank losses. According to the Dutch open source project Oryx, Russian forces have lost around 3,558 tanks since the beginning of the full-scale invasion in 2022. Kevlyuk also mentioned that about 30% of all Russian tanks produced in a year, around 567 out of 1,344, are newly manufactured, while the remaining 70% are pulled from storage. He pointed out that, based on recent British intelligence estimates, if Russia continues to withdraw tanks and armoured vehicles from storage at the current rate, its stockpiles could be exhausted by autumn 2025. The British International Institute for Strategic Studies in February 2024 estimated that Russian forces could likely endure up to 3,000 annual losses of military vehicles over the next two to three years, reactivating stored equipment. Ukrainian military observer Kostyantin Mashovets had earlier estimated that Russia's defense industry could produce around 250 to 300 new tanks and repair another 250 to 300 annually. Western analysts report that Russia has decommissioned weapons accumulated during the Soviet era, but up to 70% of old tanks have not been moved and the rest have been refurbished and passed off as new. The Russians are also removing artillery barrels from old equipment and installing them on self-propelled howitzers. If this continues, Russia will reach a critical point of depletion in 2025. The much-vaunted Russian offensive against Kharkiv in the north that started in May is fizzling out. Its advances elsewhere along the line, especially in the Donbass region, have been both strategically trivial and achieved only at huge cost. The question now is less whether Ukraine can stay in the fight and more how long can Russia maintain its current tempo of operations. The key issue is not manpower. Russia seems able to go on finding another 25,000 or so soldiers each month to maintain numbers at the front of around 470,000, although it is paying more for them. Production of missiles to strike Ukrainian infrastructure is also surging. The Russian Black Sea Fleet does not have ships with launchers for the Onyx and Siakon missiles. This was stated by spokesman for the Navy of Ukraine, Dmitry Pertenchuk. One of the advantages is that the Black Sea Fleet does not have ships carrying cruise missiles that have universal launchers. These are the Onyx and Siakon missiles. This is actually a positive moment for us. The models here are more outdated, he said. According to Pletenchuk, 
the location of Novorossiysk Bay itself is not the best from a geographical point of view due to difficult navigation during storms. The closed Bosphorus is also a problem for them, and here there is already a problem not only in ensuring their activities in the Azov Black Sea region, but in ensuring the activities of the permanent operational group in the Mediterranean where they are based in Tatus, the Navy representative added. Recall the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine has played out largely on land and in the air. It is a bitterly contested, gruelling ground war accompanied by brutal Russian aerial attacks on civilian infrastructure and a slow but increasing Ukrainian response. But a less appreciated but vital focus of the war is happening on water too. There, a contest for control of the Black Sea has seen Russia stunningly defeated. Control of the Black Sea's near waters has been contested throughout the centuries and has played a role in the current Russian-Ukraine war. Russia's seizure of the Crimean Peninsula in 2014 allowed it to control the naval port of Sevastopol. What were near waters of Ukraine became de facto near waters for Russia. Controlling these near waters allowed Russia to disrupt Ukraine's trade, especially the export of grain to African far waters. Alongside being thwarted in its ability to disrupt Ukrainian exports, Russia has also come under direct naval attack from Ukraine. Since February 2022, using unmanned attack drones, Ukraine has successfully sunk or damaged Russian ships and whittled away at Russia's Black Sea fleet, sinking about 15 of its pre-war fleet of about 36 warships and damaging many others. Russia has been forced to limit its use of Sevastopol and station its ships in the eastern part of the Black Sea. It cannot effectively function in the near waters it gained through the seizure of Crimea. Уебал мой град. Вчера химарь, блядь, прилетел. Ебаный в рот. Сейчас покажу, что нахуй. От него, блядь, осталось. Выгорело нахуй. Все. Деревьев нету совсем нихуя. Ебну пакет полный. Просто пиздец. Блядь, глянь, что, блядь, осталось. Ебаный в рот. Лес густой был, блядь. Да пиздос. Ебать, до сих пор все слеет нахуй. Ёб ты, глянь, деревья поповалило какие, ебать тулюсь у нас, глянь, пакет въебал, пиздец, вот что осталось от моего града, блядь, глянь, ёб стволы поповалило нахуй тут, ебать, помаху им сдул, ёбаный в рот, так нахуй, блядь, и работаем, ёбаный в рот. Пиздец, нихуя после слеса не осталось. Ёбаный в рот. Вон ямка, глянь какая. Вон мост нахуй. Зарытый, блядь. А вот от БМК что осталось. Кусок нахуй. Ёбка. Пиздец. Ебало, вон раскиданы мосты. Если вот кусок металлолома нахуй. Вторая еще дымится стоит. Отъебнула тоже. Но пакет не сдетонировал нихуя. Вся посечена нахуй. Вот так вот. Лесополки нет нихуя. Ебнешься. Э? Яма знат.